Hey, Seattle hockey fans. Happy Tuesday from Vegas. I'm here on some uh, sports business business. And uh, on the one hand, still riding a high from the NHL draft. Shane Wright and company are at development camp. If you want a good follow, we'll talk about some amazing uh, beat writers and content creators that are there at development camp. But on the other hand, the qualifying offers are out. And I guess the Seattle Kraken didn't like my poem. All that and more coming up on this episode of Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked on Kraken. I am your host, Erica Lindsay Ayala. As I mentioned, I'm on the road again. That's why we didn't have a Monday show, but we are back for Tuesday. We have plenty to talk about. Uh, you know, I usually give you the hockey news first. There is a lot going on in the hockey community. I was just on a call. The Premier Hockey Federation is a officially expanding to Montreal, Quebec, where the NHL draft just was. Uh, Gino is a free agent. Uh, we have some free agents we're going to talk about in What's Cracking? That's coming up next. But there's a lot of hockey news. Of course, it's free agency. Um, we saw Philly make some splashes. Not too many people excited that Tony D'Angelo is headed to Philly. Uh, we've had GMs. We've had people promoted. All of those are great things. And uh, Locked On NHL and any of our other Locked On hockey shows are great to catch up there. But we're not going to stay there, at least not on today's episode, because we have a lot of cracking news to talk about. So let's get it going with what's cracking. And what's cracking is that we had a pretty good draft. We had a pretty good draft. I've talked about it before. We need everything. What were we going to do? We need everything, everything, everything in the draft. And we got a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, that's the wrong screen. Uh, I'm doing. I'm going to do a shared screen here because I want you to see exactly what the Kraken picked up um, with their 12 picks overall in the draft. Uh, we were talking about it a lot, and I think they did pretty good. I think they did pretty good. Of course, everything is a little bit of a toss-up, and a lot of these guys, and we'll talk to you about exactly which of these guys that you're going to see are actually at camp. But here is what I wanted to show you. Uh, for those not watching on YouTube, thank you, as always, for making Locked on Cracking your first listen of the day. And uh, I will have the links if you want to check this out. But we're going to go through this here. We have, um, of course, Shane Wright was the number four overall pick in round one, our only first round pick. He comes from uh, the Kingston team in the OHL, 199. I've seen this guy at 91, 98, 99, but he comes in at six feet tall. He's from Canada and a centerman. A lot of people really like this bang bang with veneers and right as young centermen. I mentioned though, there are some veteran centermen, centermen that are on the market. Um, not really confident any of those are necessarily at play for Seattle, but we'll see. Then you have Jaeger Furcus. We're going to talk about Furcus a little bit, but also comes uh, from, hails from Canada, played in the WHL for Moose Jaw, 5'10", 151, and is really a prolific scorer, can get fancy on him, has a Seattle Kraken connection, and Bob Condor wrote about that. We're going to talk about that. Yanni Neiman uh, from Finland. You've got uh, two Finnish players. Uh, so, I'm sorry, Ferkus went at 35 in the second round. Neiman uh, at 49 in uh, the second round, 49th overall, 17th in the second round. Nicholas uh, Ko uh, Kako, Koko Kako, I got to figure that out. Um, <laughs> a goaltender. So now this was really interesting because the Seattle Kraken made some moves in order to um, secure some of these picks. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit, but um, 
and we'll hear from Ron Francis and a lot of the guys in a little bit, but some of that maneuvering was to make sure that they got what they wanted as far as goaltending. But you can see, I'm not going to go through all of this again. The link is in the bio. We're going to hear from McDonald's a little bit. Um, so uh, David Goyette also, but you see that they take Shane Wright, a centerman. They take Goyette, McDonald's, Robertson, Hall, and Jackson. All centermen. All centermen. So is the thought here that some of these guys are going to shift to the wing? Is the thought here that some of these guys are going to be in play for other players? I don't really know yet what Ronnie France is thinking, but I am very curious to see how it plays out. I am a little bit surprised that we took so many centermen. I would have liked to see more defenders. I mean, if we look at this list, again, you only have two defenders and you have uh, two right wingers. So uh, I'm a little bit surprised. That being said, again, there's free agency at play here. Um, Ron Francis, and it's a point that really stuck with me. He talked about when he was looking to make moves that it's not just picks that GMs want, but it's also prospects that GMs want. Well, the Seattle Kraken now has more prospects after the draft, and they have plenty of picks in the next two drafts. So how much of these draft picks are going to be used um, – and at play for different moves later on. I get the sense that there definitely is some of that at play here, but we shall see. I, um, in the next segment, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about the, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Let's do it now because in the next segment, what I want to do is I want you to hear from some of these young guys, but let me talk about um, some of the qualifying offers that we did make. Well, first of all, Carson Coleman, we reached a deal with him. Uh, this is up on the Seattle Kraken website, but you can see it's uh, 825,000 uh, AAV um, and it's a one-year contract. Also, um, there is the, the qualifying offers that were made to Morgan Geeky, Cole Lind, Carson Tor. Tor Trowinski, I always have trouble with that one, and Alexander True, which means that Hayden Flurry, Dennis Chalowski, Daniel Sprung, and Orion Donato did not receive qualifying offers. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to sign with us, but I just, I'm not alone in being a little disappointed. So let me take you over to uh, Cap Friendly, though, because this will explain a little bit or give us a snapshot, really, of where we're at with the Seattle Kraken. Love cap friendly. Projected cap hit as of right now, 60, 60 million, excuse me, 439,166, which leaves over 22 million left. Um, and so we see that uh, it's, it's the, you know, did not receive qualifying offer. Did not receive a qualifying offer. Uh, I, I like Ryan Donato. Um, I really do. I thought he could find a home with us. It's not a, a foregone conclusion that he doesn't. Hayden Flurry, not surprised. There's a part of me that's not surprised about Donato either. I just don't agree with it. But um, the writing was on the wall, in my opinion, for Hayden Flurry for sure. And he kind of spoke to that. I'm not sure we pick him up, but like I said, there is potential to still get Ryan Donato. So I'm holding out hope. I'm holding fast. I'm staying true. But there's a great story here, again, over on the Seattle Kraken website, describing a little bit. It, it doesn't go into too much detail, but it describes a little bit about um, qualifying offers and how they work. Um so go check that out. But coming up next on Locked on Kraken, as I mentioned, we're going to go back to that list of draftees. I'm going to show you the draftees again. We're going to head to our 
good friends at Kraken season, just to show you another visual. And then you'll get to hear from Ron Francis and some of the draft picks up right now. Um, it went up earlier today on the YouTube page on our locked on Kraken YouTube page. You will see Shane Wright's full media availability from the draft. I plucked out some quotes from there already. But you can check that out, and I will put up the other ones where I'm doing little snippets. You can watch those over on Locked on Kraken on our YouTube account. So if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And if you can make comments, that's awesome too because it jumps up our ability to be found in search to spread the good news about the Seattle Kraken and our uh, absolute heartbreak that Ryan Donato did not see, receive or were a qualifying offer. But we're going to hold out hope. Okay. That's what's coming up next. Take you two back to the draft floor on Locked on Kraken. Right now, I want to tell you about Built Bar. Built Bar, they're the people that invented healthy and tasty. Uh, and they have a new gift for your taste buds. Uh, you probably have heard me talk about the coconut brownie chunk. But now there's a coconut brownie chunk uh, with the puffs treatment. So now this is is a low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and all the way around delicious play on the coconut brownie chunk with our amazing puffs. They're limited time, but remember that the puffs are a special collagen protein, great for your hair, great for your skin, great for your nails. You can enjoy them guilt-free because they are actually good for you. And they're the perfect treat because they're covered in 100% chocolate. Uh, now bring that chocolate with the delicious coconut, uh, rich, sweet, brownie, creamy marshmallow, and you're getting a really good deal here. So we want you to go to built.com. You can use promo code locked 15 and you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code locked one five for 15% off your next order at built.com. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? We are back, and I'm going to take you, as I mentioned, to the draft floor. We had a lot going on with the Seattle Kraken, um, including, you know, I want to talk about a little bit of celebrity news or, you know, what what not. Maddie Beneers and Shane Wright went to the Mariners game. Beneers pitched. Uh, out, he threw out the first pitch from the mounds. They don't always let you throw from the mound. I don't know how many of you know that. Uh, I have a dream. It's a dream of mine to throw out a first pitch at a, at a Mets game. And uh, so I love that we have that crossover with our locked on Mariners squad. They're doing a great job. Uh, we're our podcast of the week, actually. So congrats to the locked on Mariners show. But um, I want to take you to, as I said, we're going to hear from Ron Francis first because, um, you know, he knows there's still a lot of work to do, but I think he's really excited about this crop of young guys and for good reason. So we're going to hear from Ron Francis. And then we also have uh, clips from Fergus, uh, Goyette, McDon and McDonald's and Wright. And so I played a little bit of the Wright clip uh, the other day. So I'm not going to play that too much. Uh, but I do want you to hear what Ron Francis is saying about Wright, in particular about that death stare that everyone's been talking about. Um, and then we'll get to McDonald, Goyette, and Fergus from the draft floor. Yeah, I, I mean, this, there's, there's no chip. The kid was excited to, to come to Seattle. Uh, I think there's a lot more being made about this staring. Like I was on the stage. I watched him walk over. Mr. Bettman stopped him pointed him to the cameras that's what he was looking at they finished taking the pictures and they walked us there was nothing else to that they're trying to make a bigger deal out of it um you know i think the kid's excited to come play in seattle i think it'll be good for him um you know we think we had a good organization a good leadership to work with him um his former coach and gm in kingston paul mcfarland is one of our assistant coaches so there's a relationship there as well and um i think it's exciting for him i think it's exciting for us and uh you know hopefully he uh works hard to be the best player you can possibly be. That's all we're looking for. Obviously, we're excited the way things fell for us last night, <clears throat> you know, getting Shane in, in, the, in the fourth pick. So, um, And then today was a good day, too. I mean, we we uh, took some swing on some guys. We think they have some offensive upside. Um, guys that we hope can score some goals for us moving down the road. Um, ended up getting a goaltender that we liked. So put that in the system as well and, and then a couple deep. 
What do you like about Fergus beyond his, his shot? Like, what, what is it? <laughs> no, I mean, I, yeah, he's. I mean, he scores goals. He scores goals in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, he's had the lacrosse style goal and different things. Um, you know, he's got the, the fancy nickname with the circus Fergus, but. Um, you know, he finds a way to score goals, and, and scoring goals is tough to do, so uh, that's why for you to be an exciting guy to try, and hopefully you can develop into a goal scorer for the Seattle Kraken. I think when you, when you look, it didn't seem like there was a lot of goaltenders in the draft that, you know, we were comfortable with, so um, he was certainly one, um, and the fact that that's why we kind of stepped up with the four second round picks to take him early to make sure we had that sort of uh, put the rest moving forward. Yeah, you know, I think the, the big thing that, uh, the one that probably has the most impact would be right uh, more than anything, so... Um, you know, we think there is a possibility steps into our lineup, so that may change the things we look at, whether it's trades or free agency, here in the next week. Um, but, you know, we looked at a lot of different scenarios. Um, probably wasn't the highest probability, but we did think that that was a possibility for us. So exciting that it happened. I just, when you look at Shane Wright and you look at Matty Veneers, I mean, it's so tough to build down the middle with an expansion team and getting two young players like that. It's going to take time for to get them to where we need to get them, but that, that bodes well for this franchise for a long time. Jay Girl, first to start off, uh, welcome to Seattle. What's it mean to now be a part of the crack? It means the world. It's obviously, I, I'm really proud that team, they believe in me and I can't thank them enough and I'm really excited to be a crack. Today I woke up this morning and I just wanted to go to a team that wanted me to be there and want to be a part of the organiz organization and I'm happy to be a crack and it's, it's a great organization. I know a guy that plays there, so it's really cool. Which play with it? Uh, actually, it's Carson Soucy. He, he played, he's from my hometown of Vermont, Alberta, which is pretty cool because there's about 500 people there and he plays there right now, so it's, it's a pretty cool setup. What what made the most to you as far as knowing Carson Soucy and knowing that you could help him as a better player? A lot. He's someone that I work out with. I skate with him a lot. He's someone that I look up to. Obviously, he, he pushes himself. He's played in the NHL for a while now, so he's a guy that you got to make sure you're looking up to and follow his lead. Shows how much that Seattle really wanted me, and I'm gonna gonna prove that that I can I can really help out the team and do whatever I can I can do to, to help win. Did you know they were interested in you, and you had conversations with them, talked to them much? I interviewed with them uh, once on, over Zoom and uh, once at the combine, so I had a I had a bit of a sense that they they liked me as a player, but I didn't know that who was gonna take me. But I'm really happy with Seattle. You mentioned school uh, quite a few times. So that being important, do you have an area of study that you're really interested in? Or? Yeah. Uh, Economics is probably what I'm going to major in in, in in college, but yeah. And when you talk about taking on a longer development timeline, what does that like? Does that give you freedom to say I can work at things individually versus having to like, tackle a bunch? What does it mean to you to know that you're intentionally going to take a little bit longer? Yeah, I think it's good. I, I developed a little later as as a guy, as a person, so I'm I'm still maturing physically and still growing. I'm barely shaving right now, but uh, I think I think it's going to help me in the long term. Just just being able to take a bit of a longer path and not try to rush things. Uh, Sir David? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll just, we'll just reset Alice and go ahead. <laughs> Take two. All right. David, congratulations. What excites you about now being part of that? Yeah, I'm very excited. Obviously, it's a you know it's a new organization, and I think there's a, a lot of room, and a lot of new players are going to be coming in. So for me, I'm going to try and do my part to get in the lineup as soon as, as, soon as I can. And obviously, playing down the middle. What, how do you describe the strengths of your game? Yeah, I think I'm a very flat, fast player that sees the ice very well. Um, you know, I think I can bring a lot offensively while being um, aware and uh, play well in my own zone. Where do you feel that your game took the biggest jump this season? Yeah, I think for me it was just playing with confidence, especially after Christmas when I uh, went back to Sudbury. Um, obviously, I played with a lot more confidence, so I think that's what helped me uh, have a second half. So I love it. Ron Francis sticking up for his guy saying, listen, too much has been made of this. We're not doing that. Um, you also talked about Berkus and, and his abilities. So we're going to hear from him. Um, McDonald Goyette um, talking about why getting a goaltender when they did was important. So just as a reminder, this is what we got for the Seattle Kraken in the draft tracker. Uh, this is on NHL.com. You can check it out. Let me just scroll up for you. So, again, the picks were right, right, uh, and Fergus, um, Diamond, uh, Coco, uh, Goyette, Nelson, McDonald, uh, Tyson. <laughs> I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce his last name. Tucker Robertson, Barrett Hall, and Kyle Jackson. So, um, I'm going to take you to the draft floor again, and then we'll go back to the Pacific Northwest and who is in development camp.
enjoyed getting to know the guys and some of what they said immediately are being drafted, including David, who was like, it's David, it's David. I love that. Like stand up for your name, which is why I'm going to get these names right. I apologize in advance or not in advance because I already butchered some of them, but I'm going to, I'm going to work on that. Um, it's important to have your name said as you want it to be heard. So I believe in that. And, uh, so we're going to do that here on Lockdown Kraken whenever possible. Um, coming up next, though, on the show, I'm going to take us over to Development Camp. Development Camp has started. Already have heard from some folks out of Development Camp. So uh, let's take you back to the Kraken community iceplex and stick taps to Emerald City Hockey. If you're not already following Emerald City Hockey, make sure you do. Uh, RJ and I had our expedition last year, and I love that Emerald City Hockey is still getting it done, uh, particularly giving you some awesome video. Great battle between Wright and uh, Beneers that we saw. But coming up next, we'll take you over to the sights and sounds of Development Camp. As always, I want to thank you for making Locked on Kraken your first listen of the day. Um, you know, we have so much exciting stuff that's happening this week. It's overwhelming, but in like the best way possible, including now we have development camp. We also uh, have the Firebirds have a, a, some new signings. We're going to talk about that later in the week. And we hope to take you also over to Jessica Campbell, who's at the Kraken Community Iceplex for Development Camp. She, of course, is the assistant coach for the Firebirds, the first woman bench boss in the American Hockey League, making history and making history with us. So all of this, this whole show should be called What's Kraken? Because I have so much Kraken news after so long of uh, having to give you updates from around the league and how maybe possibly kind of sort of they might impact us. But now we've got the news. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to take you over to Maddie Beneers and uh, to Fergus that that they spoke at development camp. But before we do that, uh, Fergus has a Seattle connection already by way of his brother. And there is this great story uh, that Bob Condor wrote for the Seattle Kraken. And as it turns out, um, Ambrose Ferkus, who is Jaeger's brother, is good friends with Carson Susi. And Carson Susi, congratulations to Carson Susi. His wedding weekend was uh, coming right off of the draft. Um, so congratulations to Carson. But um, Ambrose had a conversation, you know, via text or whatever, with Carson who's getting ready for his wedding, but obviously following the hockey news and certainly following what's happening with the Seattle Kraken. So it was interesting, and you heard in that clip earlier that I played that Fergus mentioned that he has a connection to Carson Susie, and then this, this story is a great follow-up to that. But um, here is, I, I want to take you to one of my favorite accounts to follow. I think they do a great job just summarizing Seattle news on social media. And so since they have a visual, I just want to again show you uh, by way of crack in season. I always do my best to keep uh, pe keep you apprised of what other people on the beat are doing. Listen, I know I don't know it all. And my take on Seattle Kraken news is different than other people. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm confident in what I do. And because of that, I can share what other people do. It's all about us, the fans, right? And we should get our information from as many people as possible. So again, check this out. They have some other great stuff up as always, including I told you Maddie Beneers through the first pitch. It it was amazing. Oh, the Mariners had on their throwbacks. Didn't notice that. Look at this beautiful day. I've, I've been in Chicago. Now I'm in Vegas. So I, I, I'm not, I haven't made my way out to the Pacific Northwest, but planning to do that for training camp and preseason. We talked about that before. The preseason dates are out. Um, we'll talk about more. Hey, he made it to the, he made it to the plate. <laughs> this is cute. 100 miles per hour. <laughs> um, he made it to the plate. That's a little bit hard. I don't think people realize that. Anyway, I could go on and on about baseball. Those of you who've been following the show, you know I'm a big baseball fan. Anyway, go follow Kraken Season if you're on Instagram. Uh, make sure you follow Emerald City Hockey on Twitter. Uh, again, RJ just doing great work. So um, let me take you over to Emerald City Hockey because, like I said, they've got some great stuff there. 
RJ and company, look at this battle, though. Look at these drills that you see Wright and Beneers doing. Love that. Beneers getting fancy on them. Look at these young guys, our centermen, our young centermen. Ooh, nice little deek. Nice little deek. Again, make sure you're following the folks on the beat. You know I always give you what Ryan S. Clark is doing, what Jeff Baker is doing. Um, so it, we've got so many amazing people with so much talent. I would like to think I'm included in that. So let's make it happen. And once I have my plans for when I'm going out to the Pacific Northwest, uh, I know some people have been talking about a get-together, like a, a Kraken meetup, and I would love to do that. I would absolutely love to do that. But we're going to close out this show with Beneers and Fergus. You're going to hear from them from the first day of development camp, as we like to say here, hold fast and stay true. And my tip for you today, especially as someone who is literally in the desert, stay hydrated. I got a little crack in my voice. I got to take care of that. I'm here at a, a different conference. Um, if you want to follow me personally and see that journey, check it out. But all in service to being a better sports media person, which of course will impact what I do here at Locked on Kraken. But staying hydrated is extremely important. Headaches, probably dehydrated. Feeling a little uh, tired, maybe you're dehydrated. So I'm going to get some water, particularly some tea. I'm a tea drinker, uh, and I will see you tomorrow. So we heard you, you sought out Shane Wright's phone number right after he got he got drafted. And you, you, you sought him out to talk to him. What, what was behind that whole thing? Oh, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't uh, wasn't anything special. I don't think I was just texting him and saying congrats. You know, a couple of guys did that when I got drafted. So, um, you know, just telling him how excited we were to have him. That was all. Um, not, not much. We didn't get into hockey really, you know, I think we, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys here. I think there's maybe like 27. So, uh, we all kind of just, you know, got to know each other a little bit and asked about hometowns, you know, where you played growing up, things like that. So it wasn't, wasn't too much hockey talk. When you watch the draft, uh, does it get you excited for the future, the direction this team's going? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think we were fortunate enough to get to get Shane and uh, a lot of other great players. So, um, you know, you watch it and you're like, wow, that was that was me a couple, that was me a little bit ago. And uh, now you see a bunch of other guys, you know, their dreams coming true. So it's it's pretty special. And now you get to be here, meet them all, and it's pretty fun. First day on the ice, now with an NHL jersey, NHL colors, how's this feel for you? Unbelievable. Obviously, you dream of just throwing, even though it's a practice jersey, it's still an unreal feeling. Just being in an NHL facility, obviously the facilities here are, Next level, it's pretty cool going around just looking at everything. It's it's an unreal experience so far, and I'm happy I still have a couple more days here. And uh, uh, the CHL top prospects game, you, you had a really strong game there. How, what did that do to your confidence, not, not just your draft stock, but also for you personally? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I was always a highly confident guy. I've always has always have been, and I think I always will be, but I think that just it opened a lot of eyes for me, that's for sure. I know that. it's There's a lot of people watching that game, and there's lots of – media around that game, so it was awesome to go out there and play my game. I think it was just another game for me. I didn't overthink it. It was just me going in there and playing my game, and I'm happy that it did open a couple of eyes for me. If you go back to Moose Jaw next year, uh, what, what do you think that this whole experience is going to bring with you? Unbelievable. It's it's obviously it's cool to have your first camp, and I think going back to Moose Jaw, I think we have a really good team. We have a really good chance next year. Just We were really deep, and I'm excited for the that especially just because I, I love it in Moose Jaw. I, I, it's a great place to play. It's a great city. It's it's friendly. It's fun. I, I enjoy everything about it, so I'm excited to get back there. What's the energy like out there on the ice? Are you guys sizing each other up? Are you seeing where you stack up against this draft class and these other players? Or are you just getting to know everyone and having fun out there? Uh, for me, it would be more so the second one, just going out there, just playing my game. I think a lot, obviously a lot of people throughout this organization know what I, what I bring to the team. And I think just going out there and just showing them that I'm been improving throughout the summer. I'm just going to keep getting better. That's one big thing for me. I, I think I can keep growing. That's why my future is bright, and I'm really excited about it. What was that practice like compared to other practices you've been in? Was the pace different? Were the drills anything that you were learning out there? Uh, that there's fans at practices. That's for sure. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the first times I've been there when there's that many fans out there. But yeah, it's it's a high paced practice. It's obviously everyone's going their hardest. They're trying to show what they can do, and it's it's unbelievable going out there, especially with fans. It's it's one of the first times I've ever seen that. It's really cool.